Carpet being drawn, we see the entrainment on that carpet. What just happened? Where was that? What's happened to the carpet? Yes, we can see the entrainment. We've got a terminal frame. The entrainment at this low level. Did we melt it, Matt? Yeah, I melted my GoPro. But, in my defence, isn't that what cameras like GoPros are for? You put them in harm's way so that they can get cool footage of stuff. And, over the years, I've certainly given it a red-hot crack with my cameras, where I haven't shied away from testing out their much-hyped durability. And, I've also used them to film different experiments for this series of videos. And so, when I get to film some interesting fire behaviour, I'm more than happy for my action camera to earn its name. But I may have left it there just a little bit longer than I should have. Because if you have a look at the footage, you can actually see that the camera itself is starting to pyrolyze as I pull it out of harm's way. Now, the good news is, is that despite being a bit melted, the camera still works, and it continued to record, and so I've had no issue in downloading the footage. And we'll have a look at that very soon. But when you have a look at the camera itself, you can see that it has begun to melt and deform. But the damage is actually pretty interesting, because it works as a demonstration for how different materials will react when they are exposed to different temperatures. Now this concept is commonly known as thermal inertia. Now the thermal inertia of a product is important because it will determine how quickly the surface temperature of the material might rise to a critical temperature for pyrolysis and or ignition. Now this means that products with a low thermal inertia will change in temperature quite quickly when they are exposed to a temperature change, for example, the heat of a fire. Whereas products with a higher thermal inertia will change in temperature at a slower rate despite being exposed to the same heat source. And this is very clearly visible here where the foam heats up quite quickly in comparison to the chipboard which is heating up at a slower rate. Now this means that the foam will begin to pyrolyze and then eventually catch on fire far earlier than the timber will. Now, when we have a look at the camera and the piece of wood that it was mounted to, you can clearly see that the camera had started to melt and deform, whereas the piece of wood wasn't showing any signs of deformation. And this is just a very clear example about how important a fuel load is in terms of how a fire is going to burn. And this is an important concept in modern structure fires, because decades ago, the furnishings in a building were a lot of wood and other naturally based products which would, by comparison with modern synthetic materials, take more energy to ignite and then release less energy once they are actually burning. And this change in fuel, coupled with the addition of significant amounts of very low thermal inertia fuels, such as foams, have been two of the factors that has led to a dramatic change in fire behaviour over the last few decades. Most notably, the drastic reduction in the time taken for a fire to reach flashover and the time taken for the fire to reach a ventilation controlled state. Now, I'm going to be making a video that dives into these concepts in greater depth, but for now, I think it's time that I show you the camera angle that I just hope was worth melting a GoPro for. What's going on in there, now? Carpet Look at
Now, if you've had any doubt about the importance of a little bit of fire science in firefighting, surely that has convinced you. And if it hasn't, well, rewind it and watch it again because there's some really interesting stuff that you can unpack in just a very short bit of video. Well, I've been making these videos for a little while now, and I just wanted to say thanks to anyone that has watched the videos, given them a like, or dropped a comment, or even shared them around, because anything you do gives the channel just that little bit more exposure, which isn't always the easiest thing to do. So thanks very much, and that's it for this one. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.